Have you ever tried something new and feel like uh, you're not quite getting it? That you might be potentially embarrassing yourself, that maybe what you're doing is a little bit awkward? Well, you might be suffering from the imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is something that many of us feel at some point. It can be something that you feel during your regular normal life, but also something that you can feel during your career, during your work time. So we all have been there in the moment that we might get a new job, that we are trying to learn something new, and suddenly we feel like we really don't know what we are doing. What should be our next moves? This is something very common. Typically when you are trying to learn something new or when you are getting a new position at work, you really don't know everything that is required from you. There might be exceptions when you are actually moving from one position to another position that are very similar and then probably you know pretty much everything that needs to be known for that position. But when you are changing like completely your position that you are uh, going further up to a higher position or that you are moving towards a completely different field, many times you are going to feel like you actually don't know what you are doing. And that's okay. You have to understand that you will never know all the things that are required for that position or for that thing that you are trying to achieve. And actually, many of us will feel like at some point we might be kind of cheating our way. And this is why it's called this imposter syndrome, because we feel like we really don't belong, that we are lying everybody else about what we're trying to do here. But there's also a reason why you are going to that position, probably because you want to be that person. One of the results of the imposter syndrome is that you probably feel that everybody is going to know that you don't know, that you are an imposter, that you don't know what you're doing. And actually the best solution that you have for this is that you admit it, that you admit the moments that you don't know. You don't have to be doing it publicly to everybody in the team, or you don't have to actually make a huge fuss about it. But you also have to be able to understand that, okay, I don't know about this. Try to understand and learn first who are the people that actually know about this and try to get the help to answer the questions when somebody is asking you about something that you may not know. Try to get that person that can help you make that decision or can help you answer that question. Admitting that you don't know something, it's a reflection on itself. You are actually reflecting on what you know and what you don't know, and you can then actually address it. So the next step that you are going to have to take is that you want to improve slowly what you're doing. And this can be done in many different ways. You can improve slowly by working with others in your team, by trying to absorb as much as possible from what they are doing and try to actually get it onto your normal ways of working. But you also have to understand that improving is a long journey. So it's going to take you a long time to actually be an expert in whatever field that you are. So take this as a journey. It's a learning journey, it's a discovery journey, where you are actually going to be slowly improving the way that you are doing things. And little by little, you are going to be absorbing what the others are doing and being able to then potentially answer those questions or make those decisions that won't feel, make you feel so much like you are an imposter. And you have to focus on learning. You want to make sure that you are continuously learning, that you are all the time trying to learn new things. So first I was talking about improving and there I'm referring more about improving on the current job, but also learning on the long term. What is it that you want to achieve in the future? What do you see? Start to be more strategic. Start to look more long-term and not necessarily short-term to do the answers or give the answers that you have to give at this point. But try to look long-term and understand what is it that you're going to need at that point of your career, of your learning process. And try to start already now planning towards that goal and being able to tackle those potential new topics that you are going to have to learn on the long-term. Try to always focus on how can you learn and how can you make better decisions on the work that you're doing. Try to follow somebody that is ahead on their career, that has achieved already some of the things that you would like to achieve in the future and try to learn from them. This is going to help you understand what are those steps that you're going to have to take in the future in order to achieve those goals that you have for learning or to be something else in the future. And it's a very important thing to learn. The more you learn, the wider your toolkit is going to be to actually make decisions 
to actually answer questions that people on your team or people might have for you. Because then you'll know from experiences, might be your own experiences, it might be somebody else's experiences. It will help you develop some kind of knowledge base that you're going to be able to use to answer those questions and to tackle those situations that you will find in your normal working life. And one thing to remember, it is very important that you don't overcompensate. Don't try to pretend that you know what you don't. So don't try to be something that you are not at this point. This idea of fake it till you make it, it is a popular concept, but I don't think that it works so well. If you think about the world, at least the one I work in, which is tech companies, typically if you're trying to fake your way, most of the people are going to notice that you're faking it. So it's going to be very easy to understand that you might understand some high level concepts, but when, when it comes to taking deep dives, you might get completely lost. So fake it, for me, is a very risky situation. And usually when somebody catches you trying to fake your knowledge, actually that's potentially going to be a far and not going to be something that people are going to appreciate and not something that people are going to really like about how you have been behaving in that kind of situation. From my own experience, I would say that I pretty much have had this imposter syndrome every time that I have advanced in my career. So when I was a software engineer and then I moved towards uh, being an application manager, and the same when I moved from application manager to product manager and from product manager to product director, there are things that I didn't know at all. And there are things that I was really sometimes confused about what should I be doing. So for example, for me, when I moved towards being a product manager or an act actually even an application manager, there were many uh, tasks that nobody told me that I was supposed to do. And there was a lot of things that I had to learn on my own. And there was a lot of ways of working, especially when I started as an application manager, which is something like a associate product manager. At that point, I didn't know much about prioritizing in order that customers are shouting about this, it might be important. And that's usually not the reason why something is important. So there were many situations where I was pretty much lost and really thinking that I don't know if I can do this. And that's exactly how you feel when you have this imposter syndrome. So the best thing that you can do is try to be as cool as you can. Try to keep it together. Admit what you don't know. Try to improve on it and think on the long term what you want to achieve on the future. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me massively. Uh, I will see you in the next video. And remember, stay safe.